Partner Investment, Implementing SOLIDWORKS Electrical. I'll be your presenter today. Uh, at the end, we'll have a time for a uh, question and answer session. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw those in the chat as well. So what do we want to address here in this presentation? Well, we're talking about implementation, getting your, your most out of your investment in the SOLIDWORKS electrical suite. Uh, so what we want to discuss here is why are we having a conversation about implementation and services in the first place? Uh, what does it take to standardize and automate your project creation? As well as where can we go from there? You know, how long term can we push the envelope uh, with this set of tools? So I'm your presenter. Again, my name is Mark Talbot. I'm a senior electrical application engineer at CATI. I've got a master's degree in power electronics and motor design as well as uh, 10 plus years in the uh, manufacturing and SOLIDWORKS um, portfolios. So all that means is I'm here to service you, answer your questions, help with training, and so on um, related to these products. So why are we even having a conversation on implementation? Well, SOLIDWORKS Electrical boasts that we can dramatically save time for your project creation. We can help standardize your output. We can also reduce your errors in the process. So basically, bigger, be better, faster. Uh, we also boast that it's configurable, and it's a general schematic tool. You can use this for pneumatic, PNID, anything else, and so on. Well, if you take these two points and combine them together, basically that means some assembly is required. In other words, there's setup that needs involved. If you want things to be standardized to, to your design process, that's something that needs set up. It needs fine-tuned. And another reason why we're having this conversation is we hear all the time, OK, well, we'll get to the upfront setup uh, when we're not so busy. What ends up happening in this industry is people tend to be busy for a very long time. And that the, the, the concern there is, are you really getting the, the best um, out of uh, your tools? Are you really working as efficiently as you can um, during that process? And the other thing we see is people will literally ask us, what is the fastest path to, to saving our time and improving our documentation? And that fastest path is going to be involving us. You know, what can we do to assist you uh, to get set up? So this isn't going to be a conversation of uh, what services we offer. Uh, we essentially can help uh, with, with all the things that you're going to see in this presentation. This is more to be a reference guide for you to know what setup is required, uh, what setup is really, what the involvement is to get the most out of uh, the software. So what does it take to standardize and automate project creation? Well, this is what we're going to cover. We're going to cover setting up our template, setting up our manufactured parts, as well as some other automation techniques that can be available down the road. So I want to take a step back here because essentially SOLIDWORKS Electrical is a collaborative tool. What that means is several uh, electrical users can collaborate at the same time on the same project or a mechanical user and electrical users can collaborate on the same, at the same time on the same project. They can both build that database structure. Well this requires to be set up collaboratively and all that means is that your collaborative server is on a server that can be accessed by everybody who has the proper licensing. This can be verified within either tool, SOLIDWORKS Mechanical or Electrical. You can go to the application settings and confirm if you're set up to a server address or locally. This snapshot shows locally. So this would be, OK, I'm not actually set up collaboratively. If you're set up locally, that means everyone's passing files around. You're not using a central uh, database, a central library you're not using a central project manager. Uh, this is just done with an install. So if you find, hey, uh, we're not set up collaboratively, we'd like to be, let us know and we'd be happy to help you in that area. So now that we're set up properly for collaboration, which is gonna be more efficient uh, for documentation, what are some recommendations that we offer for setting up uh, SOLIDWORKS Electrical? Well, I like to always offer a two library approach. And what I mean is, we have the ability to create our own custom libraries. So out of the box, you'll get an install. It'll have a lot of library information already there for you. But you can set up two libraries for your company, one being for all your items that are in work or in process or need further scrubbing, and one for being everything that is approved, ready to go, and finalized. What this allows you to do is when you say insert symbol, you'll only see your company's symbols. 
filter will be applied automatically for you. And you can run a report at the end of the day and see, okay, I, I'm using all of my scrubbed content, or, oh, I accidentally grabbed this item that, that hasn't been reviewed yet. Let me go ahead and dive into it. The next is setting up classifications. Now, a classification you can think of as the, the software doing some work for you. What work can be done in your classifications? And that classification can be set up in your classification manager. Essentially, think of this as the global framework. So this is going to uh, do things like giving you roots for your symbols. So you drop in a, a, a motor symbol. That motor symbol is in a motor class. And anything in a motor class is going to give you the root M. You can also set up uh, 3D parts and 2D footprints and so on that are um, broad sweeping. So maybe you have a, a bunch of panel um, manufacturer parts and you want all your panels to reference the same footprint and to scale automatically for you uh, when you use that. That can be handled very efficiently by just setting it up in your class. Okay, now that some of the kind of general efficiency setup is out of the way, let's talk about building our template. So what is a template? Well, a template is essentially a project that can be saved off at any state as a starting point for future projects. In other words, you have a project that has all your settings, all your wire styles, uh, all your setup the way you want. It can even have parts in it if you'd like. That'll be your starting point, and you don't have to worry about those settings ever again. So what does it take to build a template? Well, first, I like to start with title blocks. You can import title blocks via DWG. Um, you can scale that as needed, and you can add any attributes that you need or want uh, to show up automatically as that information is parametrically being filled out in your project. Things like created by, date, uh, whatever else you need. And that can be customized to you as well. The next thing that's important when building your template is standardizing your snap and grid spacing. And this kind of goes in tandem with your title block. Um, basically, if you are able to standardize your grids and snaps, that means you'll be able to drop in a symbol and you'll be able to wire it up very quickly, very efficiently. And you'll never have to mess with your snap commands, net mess with your O snaps and drawing lines at an angle. All of that will be taken care of as long as you follow basic standardization for your snap spacing. And that's true to your title block. It's true when you build your symbols. Um, it's true when you're inserting your wires. So next thing with building your template is, again, standardizing your symbols. There are two standards that are available uh, in online content. The first is if you're using Imperial, most connection points will be at a spacing of 0.25 inches. Now, you can use a multiple of that if you want to use 0.125 for PLCs. That's fine, but it's that standard spacing. Next is metric symbols. That's typically, in online content, going to be provided to you at five, uh, five units for that metric spacing. So my recommendation is to follow one of those two standards. You can create your own custom standard. That just means whenever you download on online content, you'll have to scale it appropriately. So the, the, the crux of building your template is going to be filling out your project configuration settings. And that can be located on the project tab under configurations. And that's going to bring up a whole host of settings and, that you can fill out local to your design process. So if you're doing, mil, if you're doing imperial designing, if you're using a gauge for your standards, if you want a specific um, terminal strip, style to be generated and so on. That can all be set and filled out. So here we're just going to look at a few tabs. The first tab here, you can select your languages, your, your drawing unit system style, and so on. And we're going to go over to the mark tab. This is where we can set up all our formulas. Every number you see in SOLIDWORKS Electrical can be uh, set up as a formula to display exactly what you want. This is pretty robust. You can have hey, I want to reserve uh, four digits uh, starting at 100, incrementing by 100, uh, anything you want. I want to grab this, this variable, 
uh, throw in a row, a column, two letters, numbers, whatever. Um, so everything in SOLIDWORKS Electrical is formula based. And then we'll move on to our title blocks. So we set up our title blocks, we imported, we created. Uh, this is where we can set, if I want to create a Turnalster drawing, which title block am I going to use? What size? What standard? If I want to create a single line diagram, same thing. Which title block am I going to use? Every time I hit new and add, this is what it's going to point to and going to add for me. And last, lastly, our libraries and palettes tab. This is where we can tell that template to filter whenever we add new content for the libraries that we want to see. You get a bunch of libraries out of the box. Perhaps you created two company specific libraries, one for in work and one for finished. I recommend just showing, unchecking everything except for the in work and finished. This will, again, add a filter for you every time you, you go to insert content into a project. So it'll just save you that extra step when you're trying to find your parts. So what is there next in building your template? We set up all of our settings. Uh, next is setting up our wire styles. Wire styles are project specific. So if you put them in your template, that means every project you create from that template will have those wire styles. This can be done in your wire style manager, and you can simply add and organize the settings for these in any way you want. Now you may say, oh great, well, I have a hundred wires that we use, that we purchase. Um, well, we can actually import those via Excel. So you can add your wire styles in the manager, export that to Excel, fill out that table in Excel and import that back in. So this is a, this is a good way to populate a lot of wire information. And by the way, what is a wire style? Well, a wire style is anytime you have a unique formula, numbering scheme, or a unique wire that you purchase. So if you have, you purchase a wire, but you have two different formulas that you have to, numbering schemes you have to use for that wire, um, then you'd have two times all your wires that you purchase for wire styles, uh, just as a quick example. Well, I mentioned that wire styles are project specific. Let's beg the question, is there a way to add wire styles from one project to another? What you can do is you can simply copy one over, um, copy a wire over from one project to another. That'll add it into that new project. You can always start from a template. That is probably the best best way to do it. But realistically, you'll probably be adding wires down the road. So what do you do? Well, you can also library your wire styles by using what's called a macro. And a macro is simply a collection of any information that you want and storing that information as its own library entity. So you can literally group, maybe you have a bunch of 18 gauge wires. You can draw those on a schematic and you can save that whole schematic as its own library entity and pull that into any project that you choose, thereby adding all those wire styles to that project. So what's next in our template? So we've, we've got all our settings, we've got our title blocks, we've got our wire styles. Well, what about design rule checks? So, Design rule checks can be added into any project at any point in time, but it's very nice to have all the ones that are standard to your company ready to go. And so what you can do is in your template, you can add all the ones that are relevant to your design process. Uh, say you want to confirm if something's been inserted in 3D. Say you want to confirm that you haven't put too big of a wire in a specific connection or too many wires in a specific connection. These are all out of the box design rule checks that you can add to your project template. You can also create custom design rule checks. Uh, SOLIDWORKS Electrical allows you to essentially create and combine any metadata that's in uh, the database in any fashion that you'd like. And that goes right into reports. Not only can we set up our design rule checks, so we finish our design, we pop over and make sure everything's correct and cohesive according to the rules we want to check, then we can output all of our metadata in a form that is going to be convenient for manufacturing or our ERP system. This can include things like maybe you have a label printer that can take a specific input, or perhaps you've got an automatic wire cutting machine that can take length information. All these reports can be configured, set up, ready to go in your template 
so that every project that you use is going to, you just pop over to reports, hit generate drawings, and you're done. They all look the same. They all have the same great information. So is there more to building a template? Well, yes. In fact, the, the items that we're not going to cover as much in detail here are going to be things that are more industry specific. So there's a PLC automated drawing tool that's available. Uh, there's a terminal strip drawing tool that can be configured and set up, as well as a connector symbol drawing tool. So all of these, if, if those are things that are interested to you, in fact, anything in this list, this drop down, uh, go ahead and if that's specific to your design um, needs, go ahead and go through those and configure those settings and get those standardized for your company. So we've set up our template. We can now say new project, have all of our settings, all our wire styles, all of the intelligence is ready to go. We're ready to drop in symbols, but wait, we need to work on our manufacturer parts. So what does it take to set up our manufacturer parts? And this can be done a couple ways. There's online content that's available. We can create manufacturer parts from existing or just create from scratch. So if you go into your manufacturer parts manager and you say, I want more online content, that will take you to our electrical content portal. Here you can browse by manufacturer, you can browse by part, and each manufacturer will group their components into their own kind of categories. You can download a category and then unarchive that into your library. We've got basically over 100 million parts available in our online content. So that's the first place I like to start. And that content's gonna have more than just metadata. Sometimes they'll have symbols that they recommend to use. Sometimes they'll have footprints available for use. Sometimes they'll even have 3D models for you to use. So let's say we started there and we didn't see what we wanted. They've got 100 million parts, great. But if there's 4 billion parts in the world, uh, then you know we're, we're going to come up short occasionally. So what else can we do? Well, we can simply right click on an existing part, copy and paste and change from there. We can say create new, and then it's just a matter of filling out the properties for that part. When it comes to using the intelligence for manufacturer parts, we also want to set up our symbol property information and any manufacturer parts properties that go along with the circuits for that, um, for that symbol. So in other words, our manufacturer part has information. It knows what connection points it's looking for, and we want our symbol to match uh, so that it, the software can confirm for us that we're actually using a manufacturer part properly in a schematic. So here's a symbol. And what we have circled here is essentially our circuit information. So whether a... Um, device is, is one circuit, four connections per circuit, or maybe it's two circuits, two connections per, per circuit. We wanna set that up. It needs to match our manufacturer part to get the most out of that information. And that will help us in 3D as well. If we have electrical 3D, we can set up our connection information from the manufacturer part. We grab our routing wizard, we open up that part, we hit add, from manufacturer part, it's going to hand us all of the circuit information as it's defined in our database. That way, when we connect something up in the schematic, we're able to route to it in 3D. From there, we can go a step further with our 3D parts. We can make them even more intelligent. Not only will they be able to route as they're defined in our schematic, but we can set them up so that we can insert automatically several parts and it will know how to space those accordingly. We can also create smart mates so that connectors, for example, will uh, automatically snap into their mating connector. Or uh, perhaps a component will snap onto a, a DIN rail for you. And lastly, we can add mechanical smart features. So in other words, you've got a push button that goes on a panel door. That push button requires a specific hole size. Uh, specific cut feature information, grooves, and so on in a panel or in a door, you can actually put those into the part themselves. So somebody drops a, a push button on a schematic, 
you go over to your assembly, you insert that push button, it will automatically cut the hole for you, and then you hit route, it'll automatically route for you. Uh, that's the level of intelligence we can go to when building our 3D parts as well. So what's the point again? We've talked about setting up our templates. Uh, we've talked about configuring the things that are specific to our industry, getting our manufacturer parts set up from symbol to 3D. Well, the point is we boast a huge time savings for a project. So what does that look like? So we're gonna see this in action. We're gonna see templating terminal strips. We're gonna use our macros and other techniques to save time and reduce errors um, in our documentation process. Then after that, we're gonna take a look at where can we go from there? Can we push this time-saving effort even further utilizing tools like Excel Automation or even having access to the custom API that is available? The API is open for SOLIDWORKS Electrical. So let's take a look at this. So what does templating look like? Well, I'm creating a new project. I'm grabbing a template and this template represents a family of products. In other words, I have products that uh, have utilized the same base. And so I've created a new project. That project is already filled out to that base point, And I can add new information as needed from here. This can include all the data sheets I need, all the assembly information I need, and so on. Once we set up our terminal strip drawings, we can uh, generate all those drawings from our schematics. So I'm going to go ahead and generate all the terminal strip drawings for this project. I have terminals all over every single sheet. Um, maybe they have bridging, maybe they have cables, and so on. All that can be drawn for me according to the configuration that I've set up. And that's what you see here. So no longer does manufacturing need to go and, and write out every terminal, what it's connected to, and then, and then go at it. Or no longer do you have to create an independent um, drawing of this information. You can parametrically generate that information. Next, let's talk about macros. We define macros as a collection of any information that you want to be reused as a library entity. So here I've just pulled in a circuit of information, components, wires, cables, and I can then say, okay, let's use this information in context with this project. In other words, I've already used M1. I don't want you to to give me M2, I want this to be tied to M1. Or maybe I do want you to give me M2, and the software will handle that automatically. We can also insert macros at a project level. In other words, we can insert schematics all at one, in one go. In this case, I've inserted a PLC. And that PLC was represented by three schematics. So now you can consider going towards modular design tools with project macros. Well, that's great that I can insert a PLC all in one go as a library entity, but what if I want variability per channel? In other words, it's drawn with different circuits every time I use it. Well, we have a PLC drawing tool that can be configured and set up, and that allows us to add macros per channel, and those macros can then um, be generated into drawings. So in other words, I've now configured per channel what is to be drawn um, for my PLC, and it will spit out the drawings for me. Now I have variability for that specific use case. What about numbering wires? Well, this is the hit of the button. It's a formula behind the scenes in your wire style. Each wire style can have its own formula, and we're good to go. That brings us to reporting. We've configured our reports. Here we simply hit generate drawings, select the reports that we want to draw. This can be your bill of materials, that you can group things by certain columns, like manufacturer. You can sort and break things as well. And you can even sum up information, sum up your columns. So if you want to know the total wire length that you need for a specific job, uh, maybe it's a, a non-standard job, you want to make sure you have enough wire before you start. With Electrical 3D and our reporting engine, that's going to be easy to do. So now we want to push the envelope here. And what we're going to do is incorporate something called Excel Automation. In other words, what we did with the PLC tool, where we configured a table and generated the schematics, we can actually do an, for an entire project. 
So in this case, I'm going to fill out a form. That form is going to make all the changes I need for my project. So I've got a base design. I fill out inputs from the customer. They want a four motor system. They want to use this PLC. Uh, they want this kind of cable and the output. And I can point to that configured Excel sheet in an empty project. It will draw my entire project for me. So this entire project came based on filling out a form. If I delete these schematics, fill out that form differently, and uh, re-import it, I will get those changes. It's a very powerful tool, configured to order for your schematics, already built into SOLIDWORKS Electrical. Now let's talk about something that's not built into SOLIDWORKS Electrical, and that is DriveWorks. DriveWorks is able to connect to any information. It is a great tool for mechanical for configuring to order. Imagine uh, configuring assemblies and uh, handing you all the documentation needed. Well, because DriveWorks can work with custom API and Electrical has open API, we can now generate all our schematics, generate all of our uh, mechanical assemblies, and as long as those are set up to be configured, then those can all be basically created without any input, without any interaction. Customer logs in to an online page, for example, they tell you what they want, and they immediately will get a bill of materials, they'll get drawings, they can get a cost, and then your engineering team will approve all the schematics that was created, as well as the assembly information, and that information is ready to go for production. So that's how far we can take this setup.